Hello viewers, welcome to our channel. Today we are discussing the life of a comfort woman during World War II. Relax and have a good time. As the Japanese Imperial military set out to dominate Asia in the years preceding World War II, it sought to provide the best possible conditions for their predominantly male army, including free sexual services. Unlike the practice of geisha escorts, so-called comfort women were used not for companionship but specifically for sexual relations. These women were initially drawn from the ranks of legal comfort women in Japan, but when the demand for women exceeded the supply, Japan's expectation for readily accessible women escalated. As the army branched out into various regions of Asia, the Japanese government began luring women from China, Korea, and the Philippines into forced sexual servitude to meet the needs of its men. Japan's notorious World War II offenses throughout Asia included infamous acts against women, like the government-sanctioned trade of women and children and institutionalized enslavement, among others. Accounts of what life was like for Japanese comfort women before, during, and after the 1930s and 1940s reveal the realities of women losing their freedom, their bodies, and, often, their lives. The country's treatment of women during World War II remains an extremely controversial risk to the country's modern-day diplomacy with South Korea. Japan wanted to control intimate relations along with everything else. In the 1930s, governments were actively looking to find ways to deal with economic decline and social unrest. Japan was no exception. In 1931, the nation was on its way to building its global empire in Asia, beginning with the invasion of Manchuria. Since the early 20th century, the Japanese government commandeered local cat houses for exclusive use by the military, and doctors were placed at the new comfort houses to combat diseases. Comfort houses, also referred to as comfort stations, soon included not only pay-for-play establishments, but new places for the men to forcefully obtain sexual services. Women were tricked and forced into lives of comfort. Comfort was a euphemism for sexual relations, and comfort woman implied the women were voluntary participants. During the early stages of the government's campaign to sexually satisfy Japanese servicemen, legal prostitution was the initial recourse. However, the demand for women soon exceeded the licensed supply. Soon, covertly transporting women across borders became a common means of filling comfort stations with women and underage girls to meet the needs of Japan's vast military presence throughout Korea, China, the Philippines, and other parts of Southeast Asia. Korean women in Japan, for example, were often told they were going to work as medical assistants or in factories. Faced with difficult economic circumstances, the women acquiesced, unaware they were being taken to Japan for their bodies. Women and girls serviced up to 40 men each day. Some of the comfort women were so busy, they didn't have time to sleep. One comfort woman told of serving an average of 30 to 40 men each day. Yet another woman said she had relations with anywhere from 10 to 20 men per day and was constantly raw. The UN's 1996 report recounted this memory from a Korean comfort woman, one Korean girl caught a venereal disease from being assaulted so often and, as a result, over 50 Japanese soldiers were infected. In order to stop the disease from spreading and to sterilize the Korean girl, they stuck a hot iron bar in her private parts. The same woman recounted being part of a 400-member contingent of women expected to serve at least 5,000 Japanese soldiers per day. When another girl questioned the extreme quota, Japanese commanders punished her with a sword beating. When it came to comfort women, the younger, the better. In order for a comfort woman to be sent out of Japan, she was supposed to be at least 21 years old, but this was not always the case. Transporting minors for sexual services became common. Deutsche Welle published the story of a former slave named Lee Okasian, who was, was 14 when she was thrown into a car and taken to a so-called comfort station. Another former comfort woman, Chung Okasan, had a similar story. One day in June, at the age of 13, I had to prepare lunch for my parents who were working in the field and so I went to the village well to fetch water. A Japanese garrison soldier surprised me there and took me away so that my parents never knew what had happened to their daughter. 
I was taken to the police station in a truck where I was assaulted by several policemen. One account from a pastor who visited a comfort house in Shanghai described women ranging from teenagers to 30-year-olds laying on the floor naked, speaking different dialects, and waiting to be chosen by one of the Japanese men walking through the room. If they resisted, the guards beat them. Virginity was expected but didn't last long. Virgins were prized by the Japanese military, at least when they started out at a comfort house. But the desire to have virgins available meant more and more women were recruited, tricked, and coerced into servitude. Virgins were ideal because they didn't have venereal diseases, a quality which quickly changed once they were forced into sexual labor. However, this value led to increased trade of younger and younger girls, even preteens. When men visited a comfort house, officers were reportedly given preferential treatment when it came to virgins. After an officer was done with a virgin, she was then ready for other troops. Japanese military men paid more for Japanese women, in large part because of the long-held belief that Koreans were inferior to Japanese. However, Korean virgins were thought of as gifts for the imperial warriors. Pregnancies were common. Given the high number of relations taking place, comfort women often became pregnant. Condoms were not regularly used, and women were expected to take pills to eliminate pregnancy. One woman recalled some pregnant women received herbal supplements. Doctors also gave women abortions, and women were sometimes expected to pay for half of any medical treatment if they became pregnant. Not all comfort women worked at comfort houses. The establishment of comfort houses and stations throughout Asia allowed soldiers to get safe, on-demand pleasure whenever they wanted it. But not all men were stationed near a comfort house, and when they were out marching across a large swath of land, comfort women were sometimes brought along, too. Special platoons of mobile comfort women were brought into barracks to await the men. One doctor later recounted, the barracks had one large common room, which we split up into 50 smaller rooms with antechambers. Large wooden beds were brought in, bedding was prepared, and every detail was carefully arranged. In July of 1941, according to historians, in preparation for conflict with the Soviet Union, an estimated 10,000 Korean women were brought to Manchukuo to serve as comfort women for the Guangdong Army, and large numbers of cat houses were set up throughout the area. An estimated 200,000 women were sexually enslaved by the Japanese during World War II. It's estimated that between 30,000 to 200,000 women were forced into sexual servitude as comfort women during the 1930s and 1940s, although an exact total will never be known. There also may have been some executions of enslaved women toward the end of the conflict. Women who survived were left infertile, shamed, and emotionally scarred. Many of the comfort women who survived their ordeal were haunted by their past for the rest of their lives. Many took their own lives, some turned to drugs, and others simply avoided discussing it entirely for fear of shame or retribution by authorities. Additionally, many comfort women were never able to have children due to the disease and mistreatment they experienced. In 2017, South Korea announced its intention to establish a museum dedicated to comfort women in a rural area outside of Seoul. As of late 2018, there are only 27 surviving comfort women. Former comfort women in Seoul hold the world's longest-running protest. Since 1992, former comfort women in Seoul have led a weekly protest in front of the Japanese embassy. In 2007, Al Jazeera called the event the world's longest-running protest. Every Wednesday, Koreans and visiting foreigners alike join the women in asking the Japanese government for apologies and reparations. Additionally, the Uncomfort Women Project is a social media campaign started to support breaking down the trivial euphemisms used to describe the ghastly offenses against the comfort women while seeking protection and honor for the few remaining survivors. The comfort women issue continues to threaten diplomacy between Japan and South Korea. It wasn't until the 1990s that comfort women began to vocalize their experiences. 
1995, the Asian Women's Fund was established as a means of apology and support for former comfort women. In 2015, Japan and South Korea reached an $8.3 million agreement for the former to support the remaining 46 comfort women in Asia. South Koreans, however, criticized the deal, saying it did not go far enough in making reparations or a public acknowledgement of wrongdoing. In December of 2016, a comfort woman statue was erected in Busan, South Korea. This immediately flared political tensions between South Korea and Japan because, according to Japan, it violated the 2015 agreement. In 2018, Japan rejected calls by South Korea to acquiesce to additional measures. According to the New York Times, the issue of the sexual servitude remains the deepest long-standing wound between the two countries, with critics on each side accusing the other of twisting or whitewashing history. By November 2018, fewer than 30 former comfort women were alive. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and comment.